My sister gave birth to her first child two months ago and named her Olivia. The name Olivia has a bit of history with our family. To make a long story short, I was bullied by a girl named Olivia for years. My parents had to move me out of our local small school into a bigger one and it didn't stop there. What started as eight-year-old being mean and cruel at times turned into a teenager being arrested for harassing and making my life an absolute nightmare and going so far that she was considered a stalker. It was so bad that from the ages of 12 to 16, I didn't leave home without one of my parents or older brothers who were several years older than me. It was also so bad that my parents had called the police on a few occasions when Olivia followed me home and was outside our house trying to get to me. To say this was a massive ordeal for all of us is an understatement. And to say it left me with some mental scarring would be an even bigger understatement. So when my sister announced that her daughter's name was Olivia, it was a shock. My mom asked her if she was serious, and my sister grew defensive and said, of course, she was serious. The Olivia is the most popular name right now, and for a good reason because it's beautiful. My brothers told her she was insensitive and that they had no idea she cared so little about me, which added to the defensiveness dad didn't say a lot, but he told her it would take time for us all to adjust to the name. She didn't like that. I she didn't say anything, but she started ranting and raving about how many people are called Olivia, and we're not acting like that about them. I wasn't there for the whole thing. But my mom and oldest brother told her that she had every right to name her child whatever they wanted, but that they felt she was very unfair to me and that she had to understand what been through was something they could never fully grasp. Mom said she's adult and old enough to accept that people have feelings, and sometimes those feelings will matter more than others' feelings. My sister contacted me directly after a few weeks of our family not coming around. She said it was all my fault and that I should have said something positive about the name that I could have turned the tide with the family. I told her that was the name tied up with a lot of trauma for me. She called it BS and said I'm old enough 20 to be mature about it and not take it out on her and her daughter and not hate her name because of a single person. I told her that she's old enough to understand she can't force our family to pretend we like her daughter's name. I told her she was old enough to give us the time that was asked for and that none of us said it was ugly or awful. But it's associated with my worst memories. She told me we were trying to influence what she could and couldn't name her daughter, making us idiots, especially me. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. It almost feels like your sister is being passive-aggressive and attempting to get back at you perhaps because you got so much attention due to the trauma you suffered. There are so many beautiful names to choose from that it's really ironic. She settled on the single name of a person who made your childhood a living nightmare. I'm sure at some point in the future, you will all get acclimated to this. But she doesn't understand that disassociating that name from your bully will take time and that this is a shock. Then she should go to a therapist to better explain it to her. Everyone's the idiot here. She because her choice was insensitive and she could have seen your reaction coming. You, because the post sounds very much like me me me. For years, the family dynamic was considerably influenced by your problem. Seemingly everything revolved around you, making you feel safe and better. The lack of attention must have been hard on your siblings. And now it's long over, but your personal childhood experience is get prioritized over everything else by your family members. Your sister knew exactly what she was doing when she chose that name. She did it on purpose. She should have just said it openly. I picked this name because I wanted to cause problems and for me to get some attention. It's not your fault that your family members feel empathy about the situation with your childhood. Your sister has no right to call BS or to tell you how you should be feeling. She chose the name she so badly wanted it's up to her to persuade people it was a good choice in this set of circumstances. I'm male 38, my wife, 39, and my three kids are currently on location. Basically, I'm part of the loyalty club with the airline we were traveling with, and that means that there are lots of cool perks like a lounge, points, food, etc. I also rack up a lot of points, which is always a nice side. Given I don't want to dish out $10 on a flight ticket, we're all traveling economy however, about 20 or 25 minutes before boarding began. 
they called my tier of the loyalty club. Turns out they have a couple of vacant first-class seats that they can upgrade loyalty to. It would cost $500. This is a pretty good deal given it's a long overnight flight. Luckily, I could also use some points, so I only paid about $150 for what is a massively better flight experience. They issued the ticket and everything. When I told my wife, she was very unhappy she controlled it as we were in an airport, but I could tell. She said it was very bad that I didn't ask her first, and it would be too hard to manage three kids under 10 and one as an infant by herself. I went back to the desk to see if it could be changed back, and they said it wasn't possible. We've landed now, and my wife refuses to talk to me and says we need a serious discussion. So am I the idiot for flying first class? Dude, you are the idiot. You abandoned your wife with three kids. One, just a baby. Also, you could be more comfortable you owe her at the very least an upgraded seat by herself on the trip home while you deal with the three kids in coach. What a selfish jerk. Mommy, I need to go pee. Okay, honey. You'll need to wait because I'm feeding the baby and dad's not here like he was supposed to be or kids or wife. Op paid money to contribute to their misery. I can't believe Op proceeded to sit in first class the entire overnight flight if you can't afford to put your whole family in first class, you can't afford to fly first class. I would seriously consider divorce over there peak selfish inconsiderate behavior. It wasn't even a free upgrade. He actually paid money above and beyond their original flight cost to abandon his family. Given that it sounds like you fly and enjoy perks often, why don't you get the first class ticket for your wife rather than yourself? You had the opportunity to give her an amazing gift for a very good price. And obviously, it would have been no problem for you to handle the kids by yourself back in the economy. My family, toddler twins, and my wife, Susan, 23, and I, 24 male, were invited my parents' house a family dinner along with my other siblings and their families. That includes my older brother, Max, 26, his wife, Megan, 24, and my sister Chloe, 30, her wife, Bella, 28, and their daughter, Ava, kindergarten. Chloe has always been my parents' favorite. They only cared about her achievements, her success, and her ambitions in life because they clearly reflected their own interests. They always ignored Max and I now. They're doing the same with Chloe's daughter, Ava. Chloe did everything and was good at everything she did. She always got straight A's. She was the captain of her school swim team and my parents didn't miss any of her competitions. They never showed up for my or Max's soccer games. They didn't show up when we graduated college. They threw an entire party for Chloe when she started and finished law school. They didn't care when I started my own business, but they threw another huge dinner party for when Chloe began to work. They didn't care about or necessarily treat my wife or Max's wife like family when we first brought them home. There was no huge wedding for us, but they really went into Bella from day one because I quote, she made their daughters so happy. And they throw a huge wedding party for them. They still treat Bella differently. I try to visit my parents or help them out with errands. I tried to get my kids and parents together on multiple occasions. However, somehow, it all stays under Chloe's shadow. The same thing goes for our kids. Haver has a room in my parents' home. They got her a horse to ride when she's a bit older, and they adore her to the moon and back. The same can't be said about any of us. So while we were having dinner, Dad asked about Chloe's job. She's a lawyer like him. So they had this lengthy conversation about how amazing Chloe was at work and how dad hoped Chloe would take over his role at the firm one day. After the conversation, I asked that if you would like to know about Max's in my career too, he said, sure. The conversation lasted 10 seconds for each of us. So I told Chloe as she could see by the conversation, she was always the favorite child. She denied it, of course, but I said it's always been this way. Chloe asked me to elaborate. I told her all the things I said here. The part where I may be the idea is that our traditional parents even came to terms with her being gay. While if Max or I were gay, it would never be accepted this way. 
This escalated to an argument ending with Chloe and Bella leaving with Ava and our parents angry at Max and me. My parents think I'm a monster. I, however, think it needed to be said. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot because of time, place, and context. You came across as someone who wasn't getting the attention they wanted and decided to drag your sister to prove a point. I feel for you, I actually do, but there was no argument to warrant this. No one was up in arms. This could have been a private conversation between siblings or in therapy to address this issue, but you wanted a public soapbox. Using her orientation as a talking point was a low blow, especially in this setting. Please invite your sister to lunch, apologize, and explain yourself. Why not call out his parents for their behavior instead and leave her orientation out of it? In front of their child, no less, like, op didn't navigate this well. You are the idiot, you sound insecure and jealous, nobody wanted to talk about your jobs, so you forced them into the conversation to prove a point. Well, I hope he tried to bring the conversation around to be more inclusive good lord to have to all but insist your folks ask you about your, your career, and it fell flat. He brought up the issue of being a golden child, everyone got defensive, and there it went. Also, I don't understand how grandparents can have one bedroom for a specific grandchild, and not all. That seems really cruel of them. Also, your sister should be helping in calling out the parents for favoring only their kid. You are not the idiot. Stop doing errands for them. Stop trying to get your kids around them because they will feel ignored and watch the other grandchild adored. And if they want something, tell your parents to go ask Chloe. And if I were you, I'd probably stop the family dinners with your parents' and sister's family and just have them with Max and his family. Your parents seriously stink. My sister, Alicia, 40, married her husband, John, 40 email 11 years ago now. John was a widower with a son, now 21, and a daughter now 19. John's late wife family was still a strong presence in the lives of their grandchildren when Alicia met John and it was discussed and made clear that John's son and daughter with his wife were their grandchildren, any future children from John and Alicia would not be regarded as such and would not be entitled to anything from them. The former in-laws. John's children also shared their perspective that they would not consider any half-siblings the same as their full siblings, and they wouldn't try to share from their maternal family with any half-siblings. I remember my parents and brother, 42 raising concerns with Alicia about her decision to marry as the family with that information. She's always believed that things change and that families can never have too many people, especially if she's involved. Nobody can be liked by everyone, but Alicia has always held the belief that people should want her around. We all told her that we hoped she knew what she was signing up for and she dismissed us. Now, Alicia has three children with John, and those kids are now two teens and a pre-tween. True to their word, John's in-laws from his first marriage do not consider my nieces and nephew as grandkids, and they're not included in their family functions. And John's older children have next to no relationship with their half-siblings. I'm not entirely sure about all the details of this, but my sister is not happy Alicia's complaints are that her kids are excluded and have never been welcomed by John's in-laws so her stepkids have ever changed their stance since that conversation and do not treat my nieces and nephew or siblings. Things she considers small, like being included in some book, are denied to her children. It has hurt the children see their older siblings enjoy this close family dynamic and not be part of it. Alicia is enraged by this. She ranted and raved about it, and there were things I couldn't keep up with. But everything she was warned about by our parents, brother, and myself are now big issues for her. This is where I might be the idiot. I brought up to Alicia that she knew what she was getting into when she married John, and that she'd been warned by all of our family to reflect and see if it was what she wanted. I told her she didn't get to be mad now when everyone laid their intentions out early. I said she could be disappointed things didn't change. But ultimately, she made choices and every choice has consequence whether good or bad. She accused me of holding her accountable for the crappy behavior of others and said nobody would assume people could be so cold-hearted or, or that kids could hold such strong views from such a young age. 
She said I was being truly unfair to her. Am I the idiot? True to their word, John's in-laws from his first marriage do not consider my nieces and nephew as grandkids. Why would they? They aren't their grandkids, they're John's and Alicia's parents' grandkids. Instead of expanding so much mental energy trying to force their kids onto other people, Alicia could create some traditions of her own, make her own book for her children, etc. You're not holding her accountable for other people's actions. You are holding her accountable for her own choices, not the idiot. Alicia has a very hard time understanding that she believes they should be glad for her kids and her. I wish she'd done this. It would be nice for the kids and would likely have taken some of the sadness away if they had their own things be excited and happy about. Instead, so much focus was on what their older siblings and their family were doing. They should be glad for her kids and her. What? I lol'd at this because there's nothing more that people love than other people's children. From this perspective, I get that the older children's grandparents are quite wealthy, and your sister she seems caught up in trying to be someone else. Poor kids. We have a funeral to attend and I. Female 45 asked my daughter team what you're aware. She showed me her outfit, black tights with black flats, a black sweater, and a black dress. The dress was fine at first glance, it was up to her neck and knee length. However, it's backless. Not fully. Glander from the bra line to her waist. There's a gap where skin I see showing. I told her not to wear it as it was inappropriate. She said it was fine, and that's why she had the black sweater as it was going to be cold and she wouldn't remove it even if she were warm. Sure, you can never tell with the sweater in, but I told her it was inappropriate, and she'll embarrass me. She said tough luck, and that's what she's wearing. I said she was not, and she wasn't allowed to go. She can't currently drive because she's got a twisted ankle. Thus, I'm picking her up and driving her and she has no one else to do it. I told her I would not drive her half naked to a funeral, and she told me I was mean and didn't answer my phone. I told my sisters about this and one agreed with me, and the other, the one who plays the cool aunt, agreed with my kid and told me I was the idiot. What's I rarely the idiot? At this point, I'm not sure anymore. Technically, she'll be covered, but it's still inappropriate. Am I the idiot? Lady, I come from one of the most conservative cultures in America. Dress plus sweater is a standard method women around here use to make their dresses modest. Nobody, and I mean, nobody worries about if the dress is backless under the sweater. You are the idiot. How would she embarrass you with her back covered with a sweater? There's no issue here. Mom is too busy embarrassing herself in front of internet strangers. Jeez. Half naked? I know people should probably remember that somebody is dead, and this is a day of connection, mourning, and peace. Not a fashion show. Does Sophie think the corpse will rise up to bully her daughter's back? Oh, what's under that sweater? Skin? One day, you'll be in this thread asking why your daughter isn't calling you anymore. Oh, wait. She already isn't talking to you. You need to apologize to your daughter and ask yourself why you're objectifying her, and if you have some strange jealousy over her beauty and looks.